faithful. There's nothing like it. You look at a person and you know, I can trust this person. They are faithful. They just don't talk, but they do what they say. Oh, what a quality. How I wish that people would look at me and say the same thing. Do you know why? Because this is the kind of man, this is the kind of woman that God is seeking for. You want to be that person? We'll talk about it today. Well, beloved, we have come to Jeremiah chapter 5 and Jeremiah chapter 6. And our theme for the week is, O oh Lord, do not your eyes seek for truth. Are you not looking for truth? You're going to be amazed when you see what the word truth really means in the Hebrew language. But let me read it to you in uh, Jeremiah 5, verse 2, verse 1, he says, Roam to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem, and look now, and take note, and seek in her open squares. If you can find a man, if there's one who does justice, who seeks truth, then I will pardon her. He's saying, Jeremiah, go look, go look. Is there anyone in the streets of Jerusalem that is seeking justice, that is seeking truth? If so, if so, if you find one, I will pardon her. I will pardon the city. I will pardon this whole lot of people. He says, and although they say, as the Lord lives, surely they swear falsely. Oh, they're saying the Lord lives, but they're swearing falsely. If they're swearing falsely, are they seeking justice? Are they seeking truth? And then this cry comes from Jeremiah, I believe. Oh, Lord, do not your eyes look for truth. Oh, Lord, do not your eyes look for truth. You know, it reminds me of 2 Chronicles chapter 6 when it says in verse 19 that the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth looking for a man, looking for a woman whose heart is fully his, fully God's, that he might show himself strong, that God might show himself strong on behalf of this person who is looking to please God. And if you're looking to please God and God is truth, then you're seeking truth. If you're looking to please God and God is faithful, then you're seeking faithfulness. If you're looking for, for justice and God is just, then you're seeking justice. Oh, Lord, do not your eyes seek for truth. This is our theme this week. And I pray, precious one, that at the end of this week, that, that your heart will be so captured by God that you will want to be this one who is seeking for truth, who is seeking for justice. It says, you have smitten them, but they did not weaken. You have consumed them, but they have refused to take correction. They have made their faces harder than a rock. They have refused to repent. They've refused to turn around. This is what he's saying. You're looking for truth. You're looking for justice. You're looking for someone who was like this. And if you find them, then you're going to spare the whole city. And yet they got their faces like a rock. They've got their faces like, I mean, they're, they're stone and they refuse to return. May that not be us. May that not be us. Let's pray. Oh, Father, I cry to you now. I cry to you, I could cry to you for a half an hour. But Father, I just cry to you briefly. 
Bring this lesson home to our hearts. Let your word search our hearts. Let your word cleanse us, Father, so that we will be those that please you by seeking justice and by seeking truth. Father, explain it to us. Let us understand it. And Father, in understanding it, heal us. Send your word and heal us and deliver us from all our destructions. In your name I pray, amen. I love you. And, and I want you to know that one of my greatest, greatest joys is being able to walk through a book of the Bible with you chapter by chapter and verse by verse. Because as I read these words, their spirit, their life, they're a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. So if you get convicted because you watch this program and you're still watching, I know that your heart is seeking after God. Well, I get convicted too. All right, so what I want us to do is I want us to look at this word truth. It's a very interesting word. Word And I want you to take good notes, okay? Because when I saw it, I, I, you know, it said truth and it had a little one by it. And I went to the margin of my Bible and then I went to the theological word book of the Old Testament and, and began to explore this word. I, I was disappointed, honestly, at first until I grasped the full and deep meaning. I thought, God, you're seeking for truth. Truth has stumbled in the streets, as it says in Isaiah, and you're seeking for truth. And, and see, this ministry, this is what we're all about. We're all about three Ds. Discover truth for yourself. Go deeper. Go deeper in it. Get in small groups, discuss it, uh, let iron sharpen iron, and we have the tools for you to get into those small groups. We have them. If they won't study the Word of God, we got 40-minute Bible studies, and, and they don't have to do any previous study, but they spend 40 minutes in the Word of God. We have all sorts of things. You need to go to preceptsforlife.com and find out about them and, and get involved in this ministry. So we're about three Ds, discover, go deeper, and then disciple. Take these things and teach them to others so that they can observe the things that God has commanded them. Well, this in essence is, is what truth is all about. So let's look at it. The word is E-M-U-M-A, E-M-U-M-A, and it means faithfulness. It means faithfulness. Now, when you look at this word, and I want to give you just a little bit of technical stuff because it's good for you to have, to, to take you a little bit deeper. It's, I want you to be educated in the word of God. So truth is, is related to, to knowledge, and it's used in the Old Testament in two senses. Number one, it's used as the intellectual as the fact of truth. But the second way that truth is used is it's used more in the existential, in, in the moral way. It's, it's truth as an attribute of a person. It's truth as an attribute of a person. Uh, if you ever read Genesis, you remember there's a marvelous, marvelous account of Joseph and how his brothers betray him and how they sell him and how they really wanted to put him to death because they were jealous of him. And so he, they finally return and he, identi he sees that these are his brothers, but they don't know that that's Joseph. He puts them in prison. He puts them in prison and in Genesis chapter 40, to verse 16, this is why he puts them in prison. He puts them in prison to see whether they are men of truth, whether the truth is in them, that they are dependable, that they are consistent, they are of reliable character. In other words, do their words and their heart, their being, their personality, their character, do they match up? Do, are they, what they're saying, is that what they really are? 
And in, in this day when there is so much deceit, so much deception, and you will see this word throughout uh, uh, the, these beginning chapters of Jeremiah, deceived, deceived, deception. The Old Testament thinks more of the basis of truth in a reliable person than it does in the intellectual. So this word, E-U-M-A, is a significant term because uh, they're saying, hey, your words match who you are. So it means firmness. It means faithfulness. It means fidelity. Have you got it? All right, this is a word, first of all, that's used in connection with God. Not just man, but it's used in connection with God. And it is a word that uh, applies to God himself. And I want you to see that. I want you to go to Deuteronomy chapter 32. And can I give you a little homework? This week, sometime this week, as you study along with us, as you go through Jeremiah chapter 5 and 6, may I suggest that you read Deuteronomy chapter 32. It is the song of Moses. It is so rich. But let me show you where E-U-M-A is used. In Deuteronomy chapter 32 in verse 4, it says, The rock, his work is perfect. And he's talking about God. He is our rock. For, and that's one of the names of God, rock. It says the rock, his way, his work is perfect for all of his ways are just a God of what? Faithfulness, the same word, a God of faithfulness, a God of truth and without injustice, righteous and upright is he. So what is God saying? I'm looking for a man like me. I'm looking for someone, and you see, that is not too much for God to expect because when you and I get saved, the Holy Spirit moves inside. And when the Holy Spirit moves inside, His job, among other things, but His job is to be used of God to turn us into the image of Jesus Christ. Who is Jesus Christ? He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. Is Jesus faithful? Oh, yes. God says, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Yes, he's faithful. So God wants us to be faithful because God is faithful, because Jesus is faithful. So it applies to God. It's used for the attributes of God, what makes him God. It describes his works and it describes his word. Now, what have I just said? I have said this that God's word is faithful. God's word is true. And it is not just true, but it is dependable. And that's what you and I are studying. Take this break. Don't miss what we're saying to you. And I'll be right back. So excited about teaching you. I am so excited about studying God's Word together. And I want to thank you. First of all, I want to thank you for emailing me. I read my emails. I don't answer them all. I, there's no way I could. But I am hearing you and here you are hearing me. And I hope you're hearing more of God than you're hearing of me. And I also want to thank you for supporting this program cutting television, getting on the air, cutting radio, getting on the air, getting on the internet is all very expensive. And yet I believe that it is the wisest investment anybody could make, especially, at, uh, I always believe that, but especially at this time in our history. Because if we ever needed to know truth, if we ever needed to have God in favor with us, and he cannot bring favor on people that are not of truth, that are not faithful. And the only way to be faithful is to know what God says and then to live accordingly. Now, we're looking at E M U N 
A. And as we look at that word, which means truth, what I want you to see is it's used in Jeremiah, obviously, in chapter 5, verse 1, in chapter 5, verse 3, when his eyes are looking for truth, because this is what God is seeking in a man. But I want to take you to Jeremiah chapter 7, where it's also used, and Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 3. So Jeremiah chapter 7, and it's verse 28. And this is what it says. For you shall say to them, this is a nation that did not obey the voice of the Lord. I mean, God could say the same thing about America today. This is why we're under the judgment of God. Did not obey the Lord their God or accept correction. Truth has perished. Faithfulness has perished. It's the same word, E-M-U-N-A, and has been cut off from their mouth. So they're not faithful to what they are saying. And then you go to chapter 9 and verse 3. And it says, they bend their tongue like their bow. Lies and not truth prevail in the land. There's no faithfulness. And, and this is exactly what God says in, in um, Hosea. It says, there's no faithfulness in the land. There's no loving kindness there's no truth, there's no knowledge, there's no faithfulness in the land. And instead there's murder, there's adultery, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It says lies and not truth prevail in the land for they proceed, and the way you know is because they proceed from evil to evil. And this is what you've seen. You've seen even as, as men were doing wrong, I mean, as God was judging us, we, we just exposed more evil, more evil, more evil. You saw it in, in, uh, when um, people were losing their jobs, when, when uh, companies were going to the government and saying, you know, finances and that. Here they were giving billions of dollars of bonuses to their top executives on Wall Street. And, and they were saying, oh, well, this is what we have to do to, to get them. Listen, if you have to do that, if you have to give somebody billions of dollars when others are suffering, then there's, you don't want that kind of person. I don't care how much money they can make you. They Obviously, they didn't do their job because they're in financial distress, and yet they take their money. This is what you see. Well, now, let's go from there, oh, to Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4. I almost forgot. And Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4 is absolutely key. And you're going to want to remember this this week. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4, because I want to show you where E-M-U-N-A -E is also used. Now, in verse 2, it says... It says, then the Lord answered me and said, record the vision, inscribe it on tablets that the one who reads it may run. I want you to get down this truth. I want the people to see it and then seeing it, I want them to run with it and to tell others. They didn't have newspapers. They didn't have the communication system that you and I had. It was mouth to mouth. He says, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. If it hastens, it hastens towards the goal. It will not fail. Though it tarries, wait for it, for it will certainly come. It will not delay. I'm telling you something that is pure truth. Behold, as for the proud one, it says his soul is not right within him, but the righteous will live by his faith. The just, you remember it this way, the just shall live by his faith. It was the verse that converted Luther. It's, it's, it's used in Romans, it's used in James, it's used in, in Hebrews. It is, it is like the pearl of truth in the word of God. The just, the justified, the one declared righteous will live by his faith. But now it says, when it says faith, it has that one in it. It is E-U-E-M-U-N-A again. We'll live by his what? Faithfulness. 
It's not just, okay, I believe the Bible. No, it's your faithfulness to the Bible. It's your faithfulness to what God says. And so I want you to see this. I want you to see this. Now you understand in verse 3 of Jeremiah chapter 5 why he says, Oh Lord, do not your eyes look for truth. Do not your eyes look for faithfulness because the just will live by faithfulness. And, and, and so then he says, okay, they've refused to repent. And he says in verse 4, and now we're going to take it verse by verse. Then I said, they are only the poor. They are foolish, for they do not know the way of the Lord or the ordinance of God. The reason these people are, 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 are not faithful, the reason they're not seeking justice is because they're poor. They're uneducated. They don't know. They don't know the ordinance of God. He says, I will go to the great and I will speak to them for they know the way of the Lord and the ordinance of their God. The great people know this, but they too with one accord have broken the yoke. They have burst the bonds. They have said no. They knew it, but they said no. I will not be faithful to it. So this week, what are we going to do? Well, this week, I want you to see three things. I want us to look at God as we go now verse by verse through Jeremiah chapter 5 and chapter 6. I want us to look at God's search for truth and justice in his people. The second thing we're going to look at is we're going and we're going to come to it at the heart of those who truly fear God, who truly respect God, who truly believe God. And we're going to look at the heart of those who don't and where it leads. And the third thing we're going to come across and it'll be closer to the end of this week is when you come to the crossroads. When you come to the crossroads, which path are you going to take? Now see, America is at the crossroads. I've been teaching this before it ever, before it ever happened in America that we were at the crossroads. I've been saying for several years, God's judgment is coming. I was saying it before 9-11 in the year 2001. God's judgment is going to come. If you know the word, you know that that's what's going to happen. So precious one, as we look at this, as we go through this book and this chapter and the next chapter, I want you to say, God, I want to be a man. I want to be a woman that you're seeking for. I want to be faithful. I want not just to have it on my lips. I want to have it in my heart. I want to walk your ancient paths not man's modern way. As we wrap it up today, as we look at God's precept for life, I told you that I wanted you to read Deuteronomy chapter 32, but I want to take you there very, very quickly and whet your appetite because what I want you to see today is that you need to be very, very careful when you're fat and sassy and comfortable because that's the time of your vulnerability. And that's the time when we really see what you're made of. Listen, in Deuteronomy chapter 32, this is the song of Moses. And it says in verse three, for I proclaim the name of the Lord Ascribe greatness to our God. The rock, his work is perfect. All of his ways are just. A God of faithfulness and without injustice. Righteous and upright is he. You can never point your finger at God and say, you failed. Because God never does. Because he's faithful. He's truth and he's true to his word. So now it comes down and it's talking about how Jacob is the allotment of his inheritance. He found him in a desert land, in the howling waste of a wilderness. He encircled him, he cared for him, he guarded him as the pupil of his eye. 
And then it says, the Lord guided him, verse 12. And there was no foreign God with him. He made him ride on the high places of the earth. He ate the produce of the field. He made him suck honey from a rock and oil from a flinty rock. He says, he fed him with the finest of wheat, with the blood of grapes. But Jeshurun, speaking of Israel, grew fat and kicked. You are grown fat, thick, and sleek. Then he forsook God who made him and scorned the rock of his salvation. This is what Israel is doing in Jeremiah. And this is why God's message is to him. And it says they made him jealous with strange gods, with abominations. They provoked him to anger. When did it happen? It happened when he grew fat, when he grew sleek. America grew fat. America grew sleek. America turned its back on God. America was not faithful to the rock upon which this nation was founded. We were not faithful. Now God's judging us. And in the judgment, may he find you faithful to him. Thank you for watching today. Join us for our next program as Kay shares more precepts for life.